Shanghai is a city of 20 million people undergoing rapid change. The World Expo has accelerated the transformation of China's wealthiest city. Some 43 billion euros have been spent to wow the world with an event that promises a better city and a better life. New roads, subway lines and neighbourhoods have been built. The aim is to present Shanghai as a model for sustainable urban development. More and more people are coming to live in the city. We need to find a solution to live comfortably while at the same time protecting the environment. Confucianism and Taoism say harmony is at the root of architecture. It'll play a big role in the future of urban development. But do the ideals of the expo match the reality of daily life in Shanghai? What conditions do people live in? How has the city developed? And what are the future urban trends? We start our journey for the answers on this street in the heart of an old district near the city centre. It was built in the 1930s and between 30,000 and 50,000 people live there. Before the expo, we thought that everything was going to be knocked down in this area. It was only a question of time. Now there are some thoughts about the historical value of the district, and perhaps one part of it will be kept. It's difficult to film in the streets to understand how people really feel. Security guards take our names and start a long list of calls. We are asked to leave. We move to another district not far from there. Western countries criticise mass expropriations and demolitions. But people here don't think the European way. Residents are proud of their neighbourhood's historical value. Nevertheless, they want to leave. Some houses are just under six square metres. Between 400 and 500,000 people live in districts like this, in similar accommodation. The expo has brought a new layer of paint here, but no more than two metres high. The walls have been painted, but inside it's still the same. I'm happy because they repaired the plumbing, they fixed the sink and the taps. We're not afraid of being relocated. The government will give us a better place. This resident shows us his mother's house. I haven't had any benefit from the expo. I wouldn't have the money to move even after selling all of my family. Wang Hangshu Road in West Shanghai is one of the poorest areas of the city. The people here have been waiting for years for their houses to be knocked down. There are no signs of Expo's impact here, not even fresh paint on the walls. This year it's the end of the 11th five-year urban plan. Next year this area should be knocked down. I'd like to go away as soon as possible. Here it's unhealthy. <laughs> I'll do what the government asks me. I don't know where we'll go or when we'll be relocated. But here, when it rains, water gets inside the house. China's growing economy means it may soon replace Japan as the world's second largest. That breakneck growth comes with deep social implications, according to Gu Haibo, government consultant and senior economist. In China, the economy is developing quickly, and that's led to a gap between economic growth and social justice, speed and efficiency, speed in the environment, speed in natural resources. 
In the past 15 years, there's been no change in the makeup of the economy. We still have problems with people management, with the environment and energy consumption. We depend too much on foreign investments and real estate. Chinese experts agree that China is becoming a more sustainable country. And here, sustainable often rhymes with green high-technology projects. Dong Tan is one of those. Conceived by a team of international planners, it aims to serve as a model of green urban design. Here in this area of Chongming Island, the first eco-city in the world was meant to have been built. It would have been a carbon-neutral urban center for 500,000 people. The first phase of the project was due to have opened for the expo. Most locals know little about a project that has been so heavily advertised abroad. How did this happen? We finished the project in 2005, the master planning portion. But for what China requires from the master planning stage through to approval, you know, it's, it's continuing on. There's been delays there after the change of government. I think the priorities were different on how fast the initial uh, city government wanted to implement the project. It still has to go through the whole approval process, which, you know, we believe is stuck at the moment up in possibly Beijing. Some 2,000 families were relocated to an ecological district on Chongming Island that was inaugurated two years ago. But the government did not tell them they were being moved away to make way for an eco-city that was never built. Nevertheless, most of the residents seem satisfied with their new dwellings. 49-year-old Xi got three apartments owing to the size of her previous house. She might have a smaller kitchen, but at least she has a gas supply now. Those who want solar heating have to pay extra for it, however. Relocated people have the value of their former homes evaluated, then they usually pay the difference. Yet to the European eye, the flats appear somewhat run down. I think China, the market's different. I don't think you can wait for a bottom-up approach where you get the pressure from the bottom. I think. The China government has the drive, this green vision to make sure it's sustainable. At the same, same time, making sure economically they're doing quite well as well. So even in the last three or four months, any government meetings we've had with local government, everything is on low carbon. Shanghai's changing cityscape reflects China's increased move towards innovation, but also all the challenges of cities in the future. The widening gap between rich and poor and the difficulties in people management. This leads to one more question, is sustainability for everyone?